Hello, so uh, this video is for the benefit of my students and what I wanted to discuss and demonstrate is proper curb fitting. So I was watching a YouTube video, um, Katia Generative Shape Design. There's a person modeling a bottle and I'm not going to share the, the YouTube link, but I did grab an image of the video to show you what I would consider improper curb fitting. So I pulled up Katia, I inserted the image through the sketch tracer workbench and I put it in the back and scaled it up to size, etc. So I uh, put a part in and you can see the image in the background. Now I'm sitting in the part in the GSD workbench and let me orient this um, toward the front. So I took his sketch and I put in points. You can kind of see the points there in the background. So he had, I believe it's 12 points, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 points. So 13 points. So he's got the shape of a water bottle, which is great, right? So I don't know how he created the shape. Maybe he sketched it out and whatnot. And he, he did a good job lining up the points, but it's there's 13 points on this. And with the exception of maybe this last little point here, you can, you should be able to model the shape or get it really, really close with a lot less than this with 13 points. I consider that overfitting. Um, so if you get into data mining or other sciences dealing with curve fitting, I would consider that overfitting. So um, I want to demonstrate how better to do this. My philosophy is the last number of points on a, on a curve, the better. Now let's just evaluate what he has going on here. So um, got a curve coming around, uh, then you got a point of inflection in here, then it's coming back the other direction. It looks like another little point of inflection would happen here. It's curving back, 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 and looks like maybe a point of inflection here. And then just this, I don't know, he's trying to create a lip here or something. So this is a little bit of a difficult part here, uh, but still. So I've already modeled this. So and he did a good job, I will say. He did a good job getting the coordinates in, uh, getting coordinates in and getting this lined up. I mean, he must have spent a lot of time lining this up because if I threw, if I threw a porcupine analysis on this, and I've already done this, I want to hide this image. So let me see what porcupine analysis. Um, so that's not bad. So if I'm looking at this curve and I threw a porcupine analysis on it, you're going to expect a point of inflection here. You're going to expect a point of inflection here. And that's where the, the porcupine analysis flips over to the other side. And the length of the quills represent the curvature. Uh, not much you can do here. I mean, typically I don't like to see the curvature increase and decrease and come back up. But what's happening here is it's curving around. And then it flattens out, then it curves back around again. So that, that's fairly natural. Then flip back around. So you did a really good job. I mean, I, typically when I see points like this and I throw a porcupine analysis, you get all, possibly even some points of inflection you didn't even know existed. So not a bad job here, I will say. But I think you can uh, define a better curve, a less degree curve, meaning lesser number of degrees, with this and still be okay. So, um, and yeah, that's what I teach my students to try to do a, a sketch like this with not nearly as many points. It sounds like, you know, so I, a lot of my students would just throw points in right on top of, if they've got an image in the background, they will throw points right in on top of where they want the curve to go and then just slap a spline through all the points. And you don't realize that really that creates a, a curve that has a lot less quality. Now, this curve is, isn't bad, as I said, but it, this approach could lead to issues. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to hide this for now, and I'm going to bring up uh, the image again so, so I've got something to work off of. And I'm going to do this myself with the same points. I'm just going to use his points, and I'm going to leave off some of the points. And so uh, let me, so I'm in a wireframe geometric set. Another thing he did, and again, is he did this 
demonstration straight into the part body. And when I do surface modeling, I always put my points, wireframe, and surfaces inside geometric sets, but that's like a TIA thing. So, um, so I'm going to do a spline. So I'm in the GST workbench, I got some points already put in. I'm just using the points that he used with the dimensions as shown. So I wanted to put in some points. I'm going to skip some of these. So I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to skip that. Actually, I'm skipping both of these. Um, I think I'm going to go here. I'm tempted to go here and here. But I think I'm just going to go straight to here. Now, it's, I may be off his line just a little bit, but if there's a reason for him being and having this perfect line, if it's concept designed, and it's you know it's I don't see the importance of it unless it's some mathematical reason to follow that line explicitly. So I'm going to go there. I may come back and take out that out and do these other two, but let's just see what happens. Then just because this is such a interesting area. I think I'm tempted. I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. And I'm really tempted to not do both of these, but I think I will anyway, just because for now. So that's what I've got so far as it currently exists. So I want to make some, so I've got. What is it showing here? I've got seven points, so I decrease that by whatever, six. So, um, but I'm not done. So I'm going to actually rotate this so I can see it a little bit better. And so I'm gonna to go to point two. I'm gonna add some um, tangency control, or more specifically, I got a point of inflection, so what I'm going to do is just make sure that the tangency point at point two is going straight vertical. So I'm going to change this to be from curve, and the element is going to be my z axis. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing for point three. So I'm going to use you can do explicit two and go to the z-axis, but I like doing from curve because it provides me the ability to do tension control. So I'm going to come back in, grab that going vertical, and I rotate this because it's a little bit challenging to select that z-axis. So you notice how it's fitting now here. It's a little bit off, but not bad, and I could control and manipulate this a little bit with tension control if I wanted it to be right on top of the line. Go to point four, do the same thing. So from curve, um, curve again is going to be the axis. And I'm not going to add anything here. He doesn't have that going straight vertical, so I'm going to leave that just as it is. So I'm off his curve just a little bit, but not by much. And I can manipulate some of these tension values. So if I select point 0.2, tell you what, I'm going to start with point 0.4 tension value. So I've got a tension value at point 0.4, it's set at 1. Let's see what happens if I decrease or de increase it. See, as I increase it, it's kind of pulling tighter. That's a really big increase. Then as I having decrease, this is 1 back to 1. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm almost tempted to take 0.5 out. Let's see what happens if I remove 0.5. I think I'm gonna have to bring this tension back up a little bit. Yeah. I like that a little bit better. So I'm gonna leave that right there for now. I may have to go back and manipulate it, but let's see how it's following the points. Now 0.3, I may have to decrease this tension just a little bit. No, increase it. I never can remember which way to go with that, so. It's falling off a little bit of his track, but that's providing better potential for a better curve. And then point two, increase, decrease, see what happens. So I'm just going to stop it right there. So I'm off his points just a little bit, but I mean, this is a perfect reason for being right on that point. 
Um, I don't see any need of manipulating, forcing that curve right on top of those points. So um, I'm going to look at a porcupine analysis of this. I do have this pulled into my GSD workbench. Typically, you find this in the freestyle. But select this, select the curve. Just take the default settings there, and you know, still, I don't like this. So I can still manipulate. This isn't too bad. It comes up, smooths around, then comes up real sharp. So that's just a showing. All of a sudden, you're getting to a sharp, sharp bend. Coming back. Um, still not perfect, but I can tweak this a lot better. But the advantage here is that I know I've got a good curve. Now, he did a, the, the previous version of this video by another individual. Did a really good job getting these points lined up. Maybe he manipulated them based off of his porcupine analysis. But, um, you know, to me, I just use less points from the beginning. So this is one I'm just demoing here. So what I want to do is hide the porcupine analysis. I want to show you one I did earlier. and I took a lot more um, time in. Let me hide this one. So I, I put a lot more time into developing this one. I think this is the one. Yep, seven points. So if I look at this from the side, it looks like I did use this point. So this is one I did this actually at home. So if I look at this porcupine analysis, that's a, what I would consider a better porcupine analysis. So, but again, it's still only it's really passing through the same points that I just demonstrated. It's passing through here, here, here. So it's passing through one, one, two, three. Four. I did do this one five and I did these last two. So I just did some, you know, it looks like I only used tension control. I did a direction on point three. It looks like I just did straight vertical. And then for point four, I did, looks like I did an axis with a tension of one. So I really did less on this than I did the example I did just a moment ago. So uh, the porcupine analysis is good. Again, and using less points.